Hey y'all, it's G and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how I put together my B6 Thankful 30 notebook. It's about 5 inches by 7 inches and I made it myself inspired by Dearly D's videos. I'll link those below and I'm just excited to show you how I put it together. Here's all the equipment I used. I got a 12 by 12 cardstock fall paper pad from Joann's, double sided with foiling. I used this Hammer Mill premium color paper for the interior pages. I also used a T-square, a metal ruler, a bone folder, an X-Acto knife, and my nemesis, the long armed stapler. I also used this envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. That's all the equipment I used, so I'm ready to jump in and show you how I put everything together. Okay, first of all, we're going to start off with our paper pad. I bought this at Joann's. It was half off a couple weeks back, and I've used quite a bit of it already because I've made other books for other people, but there are some really nice patterns in here, and it's double-sided, which is going to be great for the book. And I love that it also has journaling cards built in and little bits of strips and cut aparts because I think that's going to be great for Thankful 30. So I've already picked the paper that I want for the cover, which is this, and here's the back side. And then this is the paper that's going to be the back side of the center fold, and this will be the center fold. I just thought that polka dot was so cute. And then the rest of the paper is just going to be this Hammer Mill Premium Copy Paper. It's very smooth and it takes, I think it takes ink pretty well if I wanted to do some calligraphy on it. Let's just be real, if I wanted to do some brush marker imitation calligraphy, it would work. Um, it's thicker than a, you know, just normal copier paper and I don't know how much I like that, but I just love the way it feels. I kind of wish I could put in another pattern paper, but I think if I have all three plus this, it'll be too thick. Okay, so now that we have our papers, let's just start by trimming. I trimmed everything to 7 inches, but I didn't worry about the width, only the height, since I was going to fold everything in half and then trim it down from there. So the next thing I'm going to do is to score these so they fold in half. After I've stacked the pages in the order that I think I want them to be, I am just making sure that all the edges are even and I like the way that it looks and I like the order that it's in. I'm also double checking to be sure that the folds are sharp and smooth and I find that I don't think this one quite is so I'm going back in and smoothing it out some more. I'm going to place these binder clips along the edge so that when I staple this, it doesn't slip and make the pages uneven. Once I have the edges bound, I take out this T-square and I mark kind of just eyeball where I want my two staples to be for the binding. Then I took my long arm stapler and I went right to the center where the crease was, opening it up, and I stapled two staples down the spine. I gotta be honest, I really struggled with this. I don't know if it was a combination of the lighting or the fact that I couldn't go right above it because of the camera angle and I didn't want to get in frame or what, but I had to staple this multiple, multiple times. The top one I got perfectly, I think, about the first time, but the bottom one, it just took forever. So you're gonna see coming up that there are holes in my pages, but I just learned to live with it. I was just relieved that it was done. Okay, I finished stapling it and it's looking pretty good. When I had the staple, it was so hard to see the stapler with the camera and the lights. So it, it added these holes, which are not great to look at, but I am okay with it. The paper feels really smooth and good. And then this is near the center. 
here's the center fold. It repeats again on this side. And there's no holes on this side, so that's looking really good. And that's the back. So all we have to do now is to trim these so that these edges are even. So I'm going to use an X-Acto blade with this. And anytime I do like a, a new trim with a lot of paper, I like to get a brand new blade on here. So we'll just stick this in here. Just to be safe. Screw that on there. Set this aside. And then I am going to bind this so it doesn't move when I trim it. So we're going to get a mat down. Just measure again just to be sure. That's five. Okay. Place the ruler down and then press down and go for it. Okay. That is looking pretty good. So we're going to go back to the paper pad and trim out these cut apart pages. So now I have some beautiful 4x6s and these smaller cards here and these 3x4s. That is going to be great. So I can just put these like this one. would be a great introduction to the page. Wouldn't that be pretty? Okay, I thought about it a little bit more and I think rather than that card at the beginning, I want to have some prompts to work with. I found this printable by Googling Thankful 30 and this came up and I like it. There's a prompt for each day of November. So I wanna put that up in the front. I'm going to start by trimming it out just a little bit more so I only see the colored portion of the print. Then I'm trying to figure out which side of the front I need to put this on. Should it be here on the first page or on the inside cover? And I'm not really liking the way that it looks just by itself. It looks kind of stark to me. So I'm going to figure out what to put behind it to give it some color and contrast. I'm literally rolling up my sleeves to take care of this. So funny. I think what might be nice to hold the printable is a little envelope. So I pull out my We Are Memory Keepers punch board and also some pattern paper and try and figure out which one I want to use to make the envelope. I finally decided on this dark floral pattern because I love the brown color on the other side of it. So I go ahead and trim the paper to the right size for the envelope. And then I follow the directions for the punch board to create the envelope. I really like this little punch board. It's a lot of fun to use and it's really easy. Then I put a round corner on the flap and I fold up the scoring edges just to get this going. And about halfway through, I think, hmm, I wonder what would this look like if it was not completely glued all the way down on all four sides? And I decided to check it out. 
And the answer is it's not as cool as I think it could be, and I also don't know how the printable would stay in there, so I decide just to go ahead and finish out the envelope. So I have the envelope in the center and the printable inside of it. I'm not really loving this flap. I'm not sure how it would work and how it would look. And I just want to get rid of it and maybe just have a pocket envelope. So I go ahead and trim out that first flap and just get rid of it. I place the printable back in to see how it will look and I don't like the way it's sinking into that. So I want to trim off just a little bit more on that top edge. And I, and I put it back in to check it. I still don't like it being flush, so I want to trim it out just a little bit more. And this is the point where I worry that I went too far because I don't like the way that looks. But when I flip it over, I love this little notch on the back of it. I think I can really make this work. To double double check, I move this to the left to see if maybe those two could share, but they don't. I feel like they compete. So I'm gonna get rid of the bigger four by six card and just stay with the printable in the front. I do think there needs to be one small detail to make this pop, so there are these gold bows from Studio Calico, and I think that'd be just a really cute detail, so I'm trying to figure out the right size, and when I find it, I place it down, and I think that's good to go. And that's my Thankful 30 journal video. I can't wait to get started. I hope this video has inspired you to create something for yourself in November as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye.